Hello out there, Project Open Mic audience. This is Andre, and this is another Andre's Mic segment. Um, I'm up in the middle of the night, can't really sleep, so I decided I was going to do some more recordings, and that's probably why I sound the way I do currently, because I'm not fully awake, but I'm not falling back to sleep either. So I do apologize for how my voice might sound right now. But <clears throat> currently there is an issue on my mind that I really wanted to talk about. And that is depression. I personally just recently got diagnosed within the week. Um, <clears throat> I've known I've had it for a while. I was in denial about it, but I knew I've had it for quite a while. Um... I mean, I knew I had it for at least the last year, but I recognize that the signs go pretty much back all the way down to when I was 13. So like my, my very early teens. Um, I'm not here. Like when I, when I'm talking about this, I'm not looking for pity. I'm not looking for anybody's, um, I guess the best word I could use is empathy. I'm not looking for it. Like, currently, I just want to explain what it is like from my perspective and how I feel about it. Um, And I'll go over some of my own history that this is a territory I'm not exactly comfortable with, but I think it more or less fits what I need to talk about in order to make the best point that I can. Um, When I recognized that I had it, it was probably, I can't even say it was a year ago. Honestly, it was probably back in November, like this past November, 2017, that I actually recognized that I might have it. Um, And I procrastinated from that point, like once I started questioning whether or not I had it. And I, and I took several different tests from different places. And I also checked into their credentials and they were legitimate, like mental health. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I have like a machine going in the back of my house at the moment. Um, they were legitimate health organizations. I kind of looked them up. I don't remember which ones right now, but I know I looked them up. At the time, at the time, to make sure that they were, were legitimate places, and I wasn't taking some sort of bogus test, so <clears throat> I went through that trouble and, and verified. Um, <clears throat> and each of the places that I I tested my mental health with and answered their questionnaires said I had severe to. Like, I had severe depression. A couple of things said I had bipolar disorder, and I don't know if I do or not. I might check with my doctor and see if I actually do have those symptoms and if there's anything that could help with that. But I've had a bit of a rough patch trying to figure all this out. And personally, I've never really wanted to talk about it. It's just one of those things where it's like, I can't say I feel embarrassed, but the best way way to describe it, I would guess, is to say I feel very uneasy trying to talk to anyone about it. Like, even my wife, and she has depression too. Like, but I don't even feel, I don't feel like I can talk to her about it, but I know I can at the same time. It's an odd situation. Like, I want to talk to her about it, but at the same time, I don't want to sound like I'm coming off as complaining or whining about it. It was like, because she she deals with it too, and I don't want to increase her burden. So it's it's a fine line to walk, because I know how it can how it can come off sounding. Um, but for how to describe how it feels, 
Um, if anybody's seen the movie Get Out, and you see the the mother use the the tea cup to to swirls it around to to perform a type of hypnosis, and she tells the I've got the main character's name. But I've only seen the movie once. I'm sorry, but she tells the guy to sink, and then he feels like he's physically sinking into a hole, and he finally sinks down into his consciousness. And he can see out, like, there's, like, a box that he can see out of, but he can't do anything. Like, he can't change how, he he can't, he basically can't interact with the world. He can see it, but he can't interact with it. That's sort of what, like, it feels like for me. Where I'm down in this hole. I can see everything. I'm conscious of it. I'm aware of it. But I don't always have control of the actions or choices. I know I'm there. I know I'm a part of the arrangement. But I don't feel like I'm there. Like it, it's, it's, again, it's a, a weird thing. Like it feels like all of the choices are being made ahead of me thinking about them. Like and then there are some choices I know. I wouldn't rather make that I wouldn't make anyway. And that has done bad for me over the years. It has done horribly bad for me over the years. And like in ways I will not go into. But it's caused me a lot of trouble. And it's something I wish I were more aware of before. Because I possibly could have done something that could have prevented things. But it's a little too late to cry over spilled milk. Um, another analogy, well, like I can give you a ton of different analogies for how this feels for me. Like there are times it feels like I'm just up against this impossible wall. Like it's spread as wide as it can, you can see it both ways. And it stretches as tall as it can go. And if I try to walk around it, I'll be walking forever. If I try to climb it, I'll be climbing forever. There, it's just it's a feeling of being hopeless, no matter what. Or, or really tough times where I'm struggling very hard to try to make an effort to do anything. And it, a, a, another way to describe it. It feels like um, I'm stuck in a hole, like a diagonal hole, like somebody pushed me down into it and it's raining, it's muddy, it's wet and it's slippery and I'm clawing my way out and trying to pull up as much as I can and as I start to get closer and closer but it's so little, so slow and everything beneath me is tearing apart and I'm still slowly dragging myself up and even if I eventually get there there's always somebody to kick me back down and I'm just stuck in that hole struggling to get out trying to survive and not sink deeper into it as the water fills it and makes it as, as the water fills it and I was going to say dig but erodes it further away making me have less ground to stand on and making it easier for me to sink deeper into the mud. It's an awful feeling. One I wouldn't wish on anyone. But, and I used to be of the mindset that it's one of those things where you have it, you can kind of push it away. Like you have control over it. In some senses, I, I guess that's true. Like, but when your mind is working against you in that way, it's difficult to just cast aside every thought that you have. And unfortunately for me, that sometimes leads down the road of suicidal thoughts and things that literally horrify me. I have seen in my mind my own death more times than I can count. 
and that's which is bad because I have a very vivid imagination and I don't purposefully imagine that it's just like one of those things that comes to me and they and they happen at the worst times when I'm feeling my most low is when that will happen and it's something that again like it scares me but that's why I'm getting treatment for it that's why I'm trying to work on this because it's put put stress on me it's put stress on dealing with people I'm familiar with it, it's it's really just like turned things upside down for me like when I was younger before and I'm not gonna lie I did have some suicidal thoughts when I was younger but I really didn't have I thought it was just growing up me just sometimes overreacting to something and I was having a bad day but now I kind of realize it I call I, I've always called my year of being 15 years old my worst year ever and I realized that was probably when I was like the most depressed as a teenager was me being 15 like because I, it just, everything felt like it sucked. Everything. Like, and it didn't matter if I had time with my friends. It didn't matter if I was having fun with family members. It didn't matter if I got to go out anywhere. Everything just felt like it sucked. Life felt horrible. And I'm feeling that way again. Actually, I'm feeling worse than that. I haven't felt that way for the same extended period of time. But it's 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 bad. And um I think there there are several things that probably triggered me to fall this deep into the depression. I know one of them had to do with my father passing away like right before I turned 25. It was like literally it was right before my brother's 36th birthday. And right before I turned 25. And I like the week before he had passed I had seen him. He was up walking around talking and then suddenly he's in the hospital. Well, I take that back. It wasn't the week before. It was a couple weeks before then. It was it was a couple weeks because he had fallen ill and ended up in the hospital. Um, then he got moved to a different hospital. And I remember going into the, the room with my wife. She was there with me. One of my father's best friends, who's also a, who's a minister, she was there with, with us. She was there before us, actually. And she was saying a prayer over him and everything. And I could see the life leaving his eyes. I think he only lasted, like when we, when it got down to it, I think he only lasted two more days and he passed right after he saw my mother. He wanted to see her one last time before he passed away. He saw her. And like and seeing him in that state, he was struggling, he couldn't move, he couldn't you could tell he was there, but he couldn't communicate. And that hurt me so much to see him in that state. That hurt so much to see him like that. Like I was never I've seen my father through so many horrible times. I've seen him through so many bad things, like with his health. And to see him like that, I knew it was over. I truly knew it was over. There was no going back on that. I knew it was over and done for with him. I knew that was the last time I'd see my father alive.
that cut of scar in me so deep it's it's hard to describe and I know there are other people that know that that feeling but I think that was one of my major triggers for how deep my depression went because I started to shell up shortly after that I started to act a little bit more out of character shortly after that I mean the only saving grace was that I started up my YouTube channel not very long after I think I started it that April following that but I was never fully the same like that the YouTube channel kept me from reaching the worst of it for a very long time because I started talking to people, I started communicating with other people and we were doing collaborations for podcasts and things and, and that helped me stay out of it for a little while. But I started to sink. I still slowly was sinking and I was grasping and struggling for anything that could keep me from falling far further in and it led me to do some things I really regret doing that really hurt my life in ways that I, could, I wish I could take back but at least I recognize it now I back then I didn't really have a full reason for it I didn't understand it myself I was truly just lost. And that that's one of the, the biggest things that I could say I feel from being depressed when I when it hits me really bad. I feel lost. I feel confused. I I can't think. I can't put my thoughts into words. I'm just there. And someone can ask me anything and I clam up like so bad. Because I can't find the words to speak or I have them and I don't know how to present them in a way where I feel like I'm comfortable saying them. Like, I think during that period of time, I really was truly emotionless. I really, truly was fully emotionless from that point forward for a while like and I think just last year I finally started to feel things other than anger and regret and self-loathing and hatred and that's I think that's really heavy for me to put on here it's really scary for me to put on here, but at the same time, I think I need to just get it out for someone, anyone to hear and kind of just understand there's somebody else that feels this way. There are other people that feel this way and you can talk to them. You can find them. They can help. There's always the, the option of going to counseling if you can't afford it. There are options to get a therapist for free. You have to find them, but there are options. There's also drug treatment, like which I'm currently on. Just this, like again, because I'm newly diagnosed, is to see if it works or not. Hopefully, it does. I don't know. I really don't know for sure, like, but I'm hoping it does, and I start to feel better. Like the bad thing is, I didn't even recognize it, and it was right in front of my face the whole time. I didn't recognize it. My wife is the reason I even thought about it, because she asked me if I was. And I vehemently denied it. I was, like, I was so in denial about it. But I started to think about, like, why would she ask me that? Like, why would she ask me that particular question? Like, there's no reason she'd ask me that just out of the blue. 
like she'd asked me that because she was concerned that that might be a problem. That's when I started to look into it and I was like, this sounds about right. And like, and even it took a while for her to even describe to me what it felt like for her. Like, because so many times, like, and I understand it's an uncomfortable conversation. Like, but so many times when she would explain it, it was like there was, there's just information missing that pieced everything together until she finally talked. Like we finally had a talk about it and I absorbed it. Like I finally absorbed it because she had said things that felt familiar to me and I started to understand it. Like it didn't click with me right then and there that that was my problem. Like, but it clicked. It made so much sense to me at that point. And I was like, I get it now. Like, I don't fully, fully get it, but I get it. And now I really do fully get it. I fully understand it. I just wish I did sooner. And I wish when I first... <laughs> when I first became aware of it, that I just went ahead and started to get treatment for it instead of denying it and procrastinating on it because that didn't help anything. If anything, that just put more stress on my life. I... I'm trying my best right now to just keep a calm, level head. Is This, for me, is an emotional thing. It's a heavy thing to talk about. And I can't help but kind of have, like, this urge to tear up. Like, but I know if I do, I'm not going to speak in the same manner I do normally, which will make my words very unclear and make it very difficult to understand me. So like that urge to do so is like right there. And it's hard as hell to not give into it. As hell, even when the doc when the doctor told me and I felt that confirmation, I got that confirmation. I felt like I was holding off so many things, like holding them back, keeping them at bay. And when he said, Andre, you have depression, like it was just literally those four words. I felt like everything was crumbling around me. Like everything was falling apart. And it just felt like it all hit me all at once. Because... Without confirmation, I could always deny it. I could always say, well, I'm just having a bad day. It's not a big deal. I'm okay. Which, I mean, for the most part, that's true. Like, but I could always deny it being depression. Because, again, it was just a, a subject I was uncomfortable with. I still am. Like, but truth be told, I honestly think I need to talk more about it. Maybe not in a video, like, but I should talk to more people that have it because uh, that's what I should do. That's the best way for me to make it out of this, not make it out of it, but the best way for me to cope with it. Is to talk to others that have it and figure things out. And there's my phone going off. <laughs> uh, I, I guess really, I just wanted to do this. 
so that anyone listening, if you have, if you question that you do in any way, shape, or form have de- depression, go check with your doctor. Go ask. Go describe what you're feeling. Go tell them what's going on with your head. And let them know. The the only way that you can really deal with the issue is if you're open about the issue. If you're willing to talk to someone, willing to be forward with them and let them know how you're feeling. That's the only real way you're going to be able to deal with it. And like I said, I truthfully, honestly, (sighs) it annoys the hell out of me. But, you know, I'd rather go ahead and get treated for it and deal with it than to just let it rule me. There's so many things I want to do. And then I have my kids. I can't just give up on life. They're too important to me for that. And my wife, I want to do what I can to make her happy. And I can't do that if I'm wallowing in myself all the time can't do that if I'm disabling myself because I'm giving up. Like I have loved ones I want to do things for. And I want to be around to see them achieve things. I can't do that if I'm always hermiting myself to be away from everyone. And trust me, I was already an introvert. Like, this just makes me much more deep. This this makes me... I don't even know. Like, but I know I forcibly shield myself from people. A lot of times people don't even have any ill will towards me and I know they don't. But I shield myself from people just constantly because there's a constant hurt in my head that I can't get rid of and I don't want more. And that's something I'm working on. Like I've if anybody's ever like anyone that's sub- that comes here from my YouTube channel, like you wonder why I have a long breaks where I just disappear for no reason. This is why. But again, for the most part, I didn't even understand it because I, I would want to do the videos. I'd want to get up and go ahead and start producing them and setting them up and trying to have them scheduled and stuff for particular days And I did really well for a little while there, but then I just fell back off. And once you fall off, it's hard to get back up. Like, it's like standing, it's like trying to stand with the weight of the world on your shoulders. Once you fall down, it's hard to get back up to to your feet because you're just carrying the substantial weight. And if like, and I know it probably sounds like I'm just looking for excuses, but I really am not. That's just how it it legitimately feels. Like every action I take, it feels like I'm being weighed down. Like no matter what it is, it just feels like I'm being weighed down. Like my body doesn't feel like it wants to move and I have to force myself to get up. I don't feel like I have any energy. I feel hollow.
so many things that just feel wrong with this. And I, I can't put them all into words. Like, I know that I've caused myself to have so many regrets. So many. And I'm still looking for explanations for some things. But truthfully, I... The first... The first step to finding the answers is to start fixing myself. Like, there's no way I can figure all those other things out if I can't get my head right and I need to have my head right. Because when my mind is in tip top shape and in great working order, I can think better. I can analyze things better. I can put the pieces to the puzzles back together the proper way. I can figure stuff out. Like, I have a great mind when I'm working on on all cylinders. I know that. But right now, it's like my machine. Let's just say my engine has been working at 50% capacity. And I'm trying to get it back up to 100 I want to get to the point where I can stop waiting for the bad thing to happen and just be prepared for a lot of good stuff. But I think this discussion has gone on long enough. Again, I've delved into some personal things like I can't fully go into them just because it's just not something I, at this time, am capable of doing. Maybe in a, a future discussion I'll do it, but right now I really can't. The thoughts are not going to help my situation currently, but like, and I think I need to work on myself before I try to delve back into those things. But thank you very much for listening. I hope that you found this to be somewhat enlightening in some way, or maybe that this helps someone else who's just having like the hardest, shittiest time right now. Like, I I don't even know what else to say. But thank you very much for just, I guess, humoring me. And you all have a wonderful, hopefully incredible day. Goodbye.